have to look up there. Oh, that's different. All right. Um, hello, everybody. So I'm going to be talking about a. Uh, yesterday, I talked about a discovery uh, mission proposal uh, going to Phobos and Demos, and I'm on that team. I'm going to talk about another discovery mission proposal today. This is one that I'm leading. Uh, Barbara Cohen's with FVPI. Uh, and this one is uh, an asteroid tour, a uh, main belt asteroid in NEO tour with imaging and spectroscopy, uh, or MANTIS. Um, and that's what that first line says right all over again. Uh, MANTIS is an asteroid diversity tour mission. Uh, as uh, Derek Sears pointed out in his uh, talk today, there's a tremendous amount of uh, diversity in the asteroid population. So I'm going to take a kind of a real high level look uh, at what's motivating us. Uh, we visit nine different targets over the course of our tour. Uh, two of them are binary, so we actually get 11 bodies in our nine systems. Uh, among those are the first NEO binary that would be uh, visited by a spacecraft. Uh, there's an M-type uh, asteroid we think is uh, metallic. Uh, our targets span a factor of 200 in size, including the smallest object that's ever been visited by spacecraft. Uh, and we would more than double the number of asteroids explored by humankind, possibly a much larger uh, multiplier, depending on how you do the counting. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the instruments uh, per se. I will point out that we have four instruments, uh, an infrared imaging spectrometer and a narrow angle camera. Uh, we also have a multispectral mid-IR imager. That's a contribution from the German Space uh, Agency. And we have a dust instrument uh, that uh, really has the potential to give us some real paradigm shifting uh, discoveries. Uh, all of these are uh, either have flight heritage currently or are in the process of getting some. And all of them are going to be kind of brought to a small body for the first time. And because we visit all of our asteroids with this common instrument suite, uh, it's going to be much easier to intercompare uh, what we find at each target uh, than trying to compare you know, Gaspra from 1991 to Steins in 2005 sort of uh, data sets. Okay, so asteroids are important. Um, uh, they, they dominate the inner solar system by number, um, as we know, but even more than by number, uh, they're, they're uh, important bodies. This here is from, from XKCD, uh, which I'm sure many of you read, uh, and it shows the uh, relative surface areas of all the solid bodies in the solar system. And so uh, the, uh, the asteroids here, these are the asteroids larger than one kilometer, are a, are a pretty pretty decent size. They're comparable to some of these Galilean satellites and uh, certainly some of these outer outer planet satellites. And if you tack on the 100 meter to one kilometer bodies, again, the surface area gets even bigger. Uh, this doesn't include Ceres or Vesta either. There's Ceres and there's Vesta. So there's a lot of surface area out there. And we know that all these asteroids uh, have collectively experienced a wide range of processes, have gone through a lot of different histories from one another, uh, some of them are basically the same as they were when they formed four and a half billion years ago. Others uh, have gone through melting and, uh, and um, differentiation and, and processes that are still going on today. And of course, as the uh, planetary defense community and the exploration community and the in-situ resource community knows, uh, they offer both hazards to civilization today and also opportunities for the future. Um, so this is uh, similar to a, a slide that, uh, again, that Derek showed. Uh, there's a variety of compositions in the asteroid population that we know from meteorite collection and that we also know from uh, remote sensing. Uh, everything from high albedo, high reflectance silicates uh, to low albedo uh, carbonaceous material uh, that's organic rich. There are iron meteorites. Uh, they show a variety of, of hydrated minerals and, and uh, anhydrous minerals. Uh, and in, in the visible and near IR, in the, the mid IR, and the, I guess, further mid IR, thermal IR, uh, these compositions can be distinguished from one another relatively easily. Uh, they show geological variety. Here we have uh, Eros on top and Itakawa on the bottom. Uh, these are going to be showing up a lot in this talk. Um, and these differ in size by an order of magnitude, uh, I guess, an order, two orders of magnitude uh, in their long dimensions. Um, and even just looking at them, you can see that Eros is dominated by craters. Uh, there are blocks on the surface. There are these, these uh, ponds. Um, while Itakawa is, is much more obviously just dominated by blocks, it, it looks like a rubble pile. It looks like it's a, a, a bunch of unconsolidated material that is being held together by gravity. And then as, as noted, uh, 
asteroids experience a variety of unusual processes. Unusual in the sense that the forces involved are so small that they only become obvious when you're looking at bodies on kilometer scale or smaller. Uh, for instance, this is a, uh, a plot from uh, Kevin Walsh and Patrick Michel uh, that kind of, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a schematic of the YORP, uh, the YORP uh, force where a body spins up, material moves uh, from the poles to the equator, and eventually you end up with this equatorial ridge that people have referred to before, which we see on many NEOs. And uh, the process can continue to the point of having material uh, fission. Fission isn't really a verb, though, but you know what I mean. Leave the body uh, and form a satellite. Uh, about 15% of NEOs have satellites. And we think that uh, many of the, the bodies in the kind of kilometer size range with satellites have them form in this way. Um, this is a HST image uh, Dave Jewett took. Um, and it shows that uh, kind of a, a, a different end member of the same process where material can be shed off of asteroids that are spinning very, very rapidly, and you end up with these dust tails uh, as, as uh, dust is shed. So Mantis is the uh, mission that we are proposing to uh, try and address some of this and uh, observe this diversity and sample this diversity. Um, I'm not going to talk about the science goals in detail, but basically we're going to do compositional studies. Uh, we're going to do uh, uh, geological and regolith uh, studies. Uh, we want to investigate the interior structure of asteroids. And we're also going to characterize uh, the potentially hazardous asteroids in our, along our trajectory. Uh, each of these corresponds to uh, the four main goals in NASA's science plan for planetary science. OK, so that's great. But what do we need to do? Uh, and you, we're just doing flybys. You know, Is that going to be good enough? So uh, typically, uh, the flybys, when people think about flybys, they think about uh, what we did for uh, GASPRA and IDA and, and, again, some of these earlier missions, where typically we'd get kind of 50 meters per pixel uh, imagery. And uh, for spectra, uh, maybe we get 200 meters per pixel spatial resolution for our spectral data. Uh, this shows the kind of information you'd get if you visited Itakawa or Phobos with those, uh, with those resolutions. Uh, you see some bright spots. You see some dark spots. You might be able to say that this area has a different spectral uh, properties than this area, but you don't really know beyond that what's going on. Uh, with the kinds of cameras that we now have available uh, that, are, that have flight heritage uh, and with the kind of uh, trajectory and ability to, to, to fly close to asteroids that we now have, we can basically get resolution like this on our flybys and be able to go, oh, OK, this bright spot here is due to sun angle. Uh, these dark spots are, are boulders or smooth areas. This area uh, with the different spectral properties is on the rim of this crater and be able to actually get the, the geological context that we need to understand what we're looking at at these spatial scales. Haven't we been to a bunch of asteroids already? Well, the answer is not, not so much as you might think. Uh, this is uh, adapted from Emily Lakdawalla's uh, image montage of all of the small bodies that have been visited by spacecraft. Um, and this is all of the asteroids less than 100 kilometers in diameter for which we have really any resolved imagery at all. Uh, this doesn't include Vesta or Ceres, but I think most of the asteroid community would agree that that those are fundamentally different objects than, than these smaller ones. Uh, so this is maybe a dozen. But how many of them have this meter scale, uh, this meter scale um, uh, spatial resolution that we need to understand the geology? And the answer is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going in a different direction. How many of them have spectral data at all? So these are the asteroids for which we have any imaging and any resolved spectra. And many of them drop off. Um, for instance, Matilda, the spectrometer was not operating at the time of the Matilda encounter. We have no spectra of Matilda from, from near. Yes, we have visible colors, but that's, you know, near IR. Uh, and you're talking out of turn up there, though. Dude. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Uh, if we add this requirement that, look, we want to have meter scale imagery of the surface, we're basically down to Eros and Itakawa, and that's it. Uh, if we want to say, you know, 
where do we have this decameter scale spectral uh, spatial resolution for our spectral data? Uh, we're down to nothing. Uh, now, of course, Osiris Rex and uh, Hayabusa 2 will probably add a couple of things on here. But again, we're, there's a large number of asteroids out there and a large amount of diversity uh, that, that really we need to understand uh, in order to understand asteroids. Uh, to put this on the plot, for people who like plots better, uh, this now looks at the best global data available for all of these missions that have already flown uh, between rendezvous and flybys. Uh, this is the um, spectral image uh, resolution that's needed and that we will achieve with Mantis. And you can see that we are comparable to um, rendezvous missions um, and do much better than previous flyby missions. As far as our targets, uh, we again have nine targets uh, that cover a wide range in sizes and fill in this gap between Eros and Itakawa and again even smaller than Itakawa. So we'll be able to answer questions like, is Itakawa typical of its size? Is it typical of its, of its composition in both? Um, we cover the, the range of, of asteroids for which the congressional mandate is to, to discover these bodies. Uh, we have an object of uh, similar size to Eros uh, to again compare Eros to. Uh, we again even sample in this particular transition zone where we go from gravity dominated surfaces to strength dominated surfaces. So um, we really get a lot of data, a lot of great uh, geological and geophysical data. We also have a very flexible set of target requirements. Um, we defined our science questions uh, by types of objects, not necessarily by specific targets, uh, and that means that we have a lot of different uh, possibilities. If we say, okay, we need a low albedo asteroid of about this size, there are a lot of possibilities out there, certainly a lot more than if we had tried to attempt this even five or ten years ago. So there are many trajectories that exist that provide required diversity. Obviously, we had to pick one to propose, and we did, uh, but uh, we can relatively easily, I think, accommodate changes in launch date if NASA says, hey, we really want you to get this one. What can you do? We, we feel confident that we'd be able to fill our science requirements and still hit, uh, hit specific targets if, if they're desired. So in the home stretch here, uh, just to kind of talk a little bit more about the diversity uh, we visit, uh, we visit both a set of main belt asteroids and a, a group of near-Earth asteroids. Uh, we visit two binary systems. Um, and of course, we have to parse this because Ida and Dactyl screws everything up. Uh, we're the first mission to visit a known binary asteroid system that is known before we actually show up. Uh, we visit uh, three different, uh, at least three different spectral complexes, uh, S-type, C-type, uh, one M-type, and then we have a, a few targets for which we don't know the type. So in fact, our, our diversity in terms of composition might be even wider than we, than we already know. And again, we, we visit targets that cover a wide range of, of sizes from uh, under 350 meters to uh, larger than 10 kilometers. So uh, in conclusion here, we've really only begun to sample the diversity that's present out in the asteroid population. Um, and uh, and this, is, uh, uh, this is after a lot of work and a lot more work of, uh, that's going into it. Um, and Mantis visits important representatives of, of unsampled groups out there. Uh, we deliver consistent intercomparable data sets at all of its targets. Um, and we augment the existing asteroid data by a large multiplier, again, depending on how many of those things you want to throw out. Either we've been to two asteroids or we've been to three or zero or, or whatever. Um, and finally, the Mantis concept is a flexible one, uh, supporting a, a large number of trajectories as priorities evolve. And I think that's uh, what I have. Thank you. Uh, it is uh, a, well, it's, it's been proposed to Discovery this year. Um, I understand the review process is underway. We expect to hear, yeah. Uh, Paul Abel, NASA Johnson Space Center. So I'm NASA, and uh, I'm Hi, really NASA. interested in, in your uh, near-Earth asteroids. Uh, how, how slow are your flybys? Um, what, what, what is your encounter speed, and, and if I wanted you to target a specific target, how slow and how much change in resolution can you give me, especially if they're considered for human exploration targets? Um, 
the exact numbers would, of course, depend on the exact target and the exact launch dates, et cetera. Um, right now, for what we proposed, we have one flyby at 20 kilometers a second, but all the others are 12 or less. And of the eight that are remaining, about half are 10-ish, and the other half are 5-ish. Thank you again. All right.